find a nice, comfortable place to sit or lie down. Maybe in your own bedroom or maybe on the sofa. Allow your eyes to gently close and focus on your breathing. Just let all your troubles just float away. So, take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth. Again, take another deep breath in and slowly and gently breathe out. One last time, deep breath in and slowly and gently breathe out. Now bring your breathing back to its normal rhythm and just relax, letting all your thoughts just drift away. Now imagine yourself being in a wide open space. The sky is a beautiful blue with hardly any clouds at all and the sun is at its highest and the grass around you looks all velvety and soft. And as you walk along, you trip over a large tree root, which is odd really because there are no trees around you. They are only in the distance. You get back up and brush yourself down. And you notice something shining through the grass on the ground. It looks like there's a pulsating light underneath the grass. How odd. This light is pulsating so much it looks well, almost alive. Kind of how a beating heart might look. The shimmering light is actually a portal. Maybe it's a portal to another place in time and space. So you walk over to the light to take a look at it. And it's then that the light suddenly shoots upwards and you find yourself being pulled into it. It is a doorway to somewhere else. How exciting. You find yourself sliding down on an underground water slide, circling round and round, going faster and faster. This is really great fun. You can see lots of colors flashing past you sparkling lights everywhere wind blowing in your face pushing your hair making it fly backwards then all of a sudden you land on the ground with a big bump and you find yourself outside of a really lovely little cottage with a big red door and a very shiny brass door knocker on it you think that this little cottage must have a coal fire lit inside because you can see smoke coming from the chimney. Oh, how lovely. You take a look around you and you realize that you are in an underground world. In fact, it's a whole village deep underground. There are houses and little shops. There are people going about their business. One of them even says good morning to you. You can even see children playing in the park across the street. And there are even odd, funny looking little cars driving along too. You've never seen cars like them before. Very strange. Just as you're about to knock on the door, it opens. And standing before you is a very posh, eccentric, English gentleman. Well, I say gentleman, but he's really a very tall, slim hair with little round yellow spectacles perched on his nose. 
He is wearing a large green spotted bow tie. And he has a very large pocket watch dangling from one of his pockets. He looks at you and he smiles and he says, Welcome to my humble abode, my dear friend. Let me introduce myself. I am Professor Harry Hopkins. How may I be of assistance to you today? You smile back and you say hello. He invites you into his little house, which looks an awful lot bigger on the inside. He asks you if you would like a nice cup of tea while you chat. He takes you into his lovely sitting room and then pops into the kitchen to make the tea. You take this opportunity to have a good look around his beautiful home and this beautiful room, which is full of lovely old antiques. And you notice he has a lot of photographs in silver frames dotted all around the room. And they are all photos of him. Photos of him climbing up a tree. Photos of him riding his surfboard. And there are even photos of him looking very dapper reading his books. The professor returns to his sitting room, pushing a beautiful ornate tea trolley on little wheels, which he stops next to his big overstuffed chair. And he says, Shall I pour the tea? You see the trolley is full of cakes and sandwiches and two rather lovely china cups and saucers too for your tea. He also has little china plates for the cakes and the sandwiches too. And you notice that there is a nice big cake covered with strawberry ice cream. The professor asks you to choose what you would like to eat. Anything at all, he says. So sit and chat with the professor Harry Hoppins for a little while and get to know him. Ask him questions about his life and what he does. See what he says. After your little chat with the professor, you ask him about the very large pocket watch he has dangling. He tells you that this pocket watch is very special indeed. It can take you on magical adventures. He tells you that this special pocket watch can take you anywhere that you want to go. And he shows you how. First, he asks you, where would you like to go? So you tell him. So to make the watch work, 
He turns the hands around three times. He then jumps and spins in the air and he gives a little hop. Oh dear, but then he hits his head on the roof because he jumps too high. With a puff of smoke and what feels like a mini whirlwind, you are transported to another place. You feel a bit dizzy because of all of the spinning around, phew, round and around. The professor tells you to jump on his back so he can give you a piggyback ride. He then starts to move at a very fast pace. He doesn't walk. He hops at an incredible speed and an incredible height. And you find this utterly exhilarating and so much fun. The professor is also like a mini whirlwind, but he's very, very nice. The two of you arrive outside a very large mansion with amazing gardens. And this, the professor tells you, is Harry Hoppin's holiday home. It's where he himself likes to go on vacation. And he is so excited to show you his favorite place in the whole world. Which he refers to it as a rather delightful place. There are some very large sculptures in these magnificent gardens. Rabbits and hares are dotted all over the place. There are also some large ones of very large dogs because the professor says that they are his favorite animal. The first thing that you see is a sparkling crystal escalator and that takes you up to and inside this dazzling mansion. It takes you straight into a huge room with doorways on either side going back as far as the eye can see. You look up above you and you see a huge glass dome for a roof. You can see the sky. You can see the birds and the clouds. It's fantastic. This is a very special mansion. It's a place where each room takes you to a different magical land. Even to different planets if you want to. There is a sign above each door saying what that land is. One sign says, Land of the Pixies. Another one says, Land of the Prehistoric World. And yet another one saying, Land of the Giant Mice. There is even a very strange sign saying, Land of the Talking Furniture. Hmm. That might be worth a visit. Or maybe there is somewhere else that you would like to go with Harry Hoppins guiding you. The professor now asks you to choose a room to go into. So you walk up and down, trying to decide to pick which one you would like to go into most. Finally, you make your choice. You step through the door with Harry Hoppins to the room of your choice and you go inside. Where does it take you? Where do you want to go most of all? Now spend some time exploring the land you have chosen to visit and have some fun. See the sights. See the people. Have fun with the professor. And most of all, bring back a souvenir from your trip.
Where did you go? What did you see? Who did you meet? Now it's time for you to return home. But first, you must thank Harry Hoppins, the professor, for being such an excellent guide and very possibly your new best friend. You thank him for the really tasty cup of tea and the beautiful cake. You thought it was very enjoyable and tasty. So if you like, you can stay here as long as you want. You can continue exploring, having a good look around this underground village with the professor as your guide. That would be fun. Or, if you feel you want to go home now, just take a few deep breaths and slowly and gently open your eyes. Now imagine yourself on a beautiful winding path deep in the heart of a wonderful enchanted forest. This is the bamboo forest. The ground beneath your feet is solid but soft because it's made from fallen leaves. Can you feel it under your feet? All of those soft squishy leaves. You feel a gentle breeze on your face as you walk along the path. And you feel the warmth of the sun all over your body. And you feel so at peace here. So very happy. You look up to the very tops of the trees and you see glints of sunlight shimmering upon the leaves almost making them look just like silver stars. You hear a rustling sound in the distance. You look around. What is it? Out of the corner of your eye you can see movement. You focus on it and realize those rustling sounds you can hear are the sounds of a giant panda happily munching away on the fresh bamboo shoots. You stand perfectly still and smile as you watch the panda enjoying his afternoon snack. He looks up and he notices you. And for just one second, your eyes meet. And in that moment in time, it almost looks as if he is smiling back at you. He is. The giant panda is smiling at you. The giant panda is enormous, but looks just like a big, cute, cuddly teddy bear. He is very soft and has lovely kind eyes with black patches around them. And you are very shocked when the panda greets you and knows your name. Good grief. He knows your name. Wow. The panda hands you a piece of bamboo and tells you to notice that the inside is hollow. He says that in order to learn, the first step is to empty ourselves of our worries and our stresses, as you can't fill a cup that is already full. Phew, this is one wise giant panda. Wow, 
what can you say? So spend a few minutes getting to know this wise panda. Maybe you can find out their name. And maybe they can help you with any worries that you may have. Maybe they even have a gift for you. We'll have to wait and see. Before you leave, the giant panda, well, he suggests you make your way to the largest, oldest bamboo tree in the whole forest. The tree of positivity. He says if you sit against this wondrous tree, it removes all negative energy and it replaces it with brilliant positive energy that will make you feel so full of happiness and so full of joy. So you thank the giant panda for his time and his advice and you make your way towards the tree of positivity. As you look into the distance, you see the most majestic bamboo tree that you have ever seen. It is huge. It is so large that for just a moment it blocks out the sun and it dwarves all the other trees around it. And you can feel an energy from this tree pulling you towards it and you feel that the reason for your journey here is somehow linked to this sacred tree. You find yourself standing before this ginormous tree and you can feel 
its power and its energy. So you sit down and you rest for just a short while with your back against this wonderful old tree. You stretch your legs out in front of you. You put your hands at your sides and you feel the grass beneath you and run your hands through it and just sit for just a moment. Just sit. As your body rests against the tree, you close your eyes and you can feel its great age. And you can feel the grounding energy of Mother Earth. This tree is ancient and so full of wisdom. Can you feel it? Can you feel the energy of this ancient tree and all it has to offer? Slowly, you start to feel an energy moving around you. Beautiful energy. And you can see a beautiful white light coming from the tree. And it sparkles and it shines so brightly. You see this energy swirling around you. And you see it enter your body through the top of your head. Wow. You can feel its vibrations running through your whole body. And it's amazing. You feel great, so alive, but at the same time, so very peaceful. As you breathe in this beautiful white light, you watch it as it clears all negativity from deep within you. And you can see the negativity because it looks like a dark mist and it pops itself out of your body and sinks straight into the ground where it's recycled by Mother Nature to be used for something else, for something good. Breathe in this beautiful white energy of positivity. Take a deep breath in and really fill your lungs with this wondrous white light. Feel it as it moves around your body, your whole body, cleansing it, cleaning it, clearing it from all the things you no longer need. And as you exhale, you breathe out all the negativity. And you see again the dark mist make its way deep into the ground to be recycled by Mother Nature. Again, breathe in the cleansing pure white energy. And exhale all the dark, dark mist of negativity. And you can feel the negativity leaving your body. Because you feel so light. Almost as if you could just float away. But you don't. One more time. Breathe in the beautiful white light. 
and breathe out all of the dark mist of negativity. All of your worries and stresses are just fading away and you feel on top of the world so wonderful and just relax. So I'm going to leave you now for just a few moments while this beautiful bamboo tree fills you with glorious positive energy. You now feel so peaceful, so calm and so relaxed and yet at the same time so happy and joyful and you feel like you are going to explode with positivity. Your whole body is vibrating with inner peace and relaxation. And you feel like a brand new you, the real you. Now it's time to thank the beautiful ancient bamboo tree for blessing you with this new found positivity, which you will bring back into your daily life. And remember, you can come back to this wonderful place whenever you like. Now, imagine yourself on your own private island. And this beautiful island is surrounded by the deepest blue ocean that you have ever seen and this island is your safe place a place where you can do anything you want see anything you want be anything you want as you stand there on your island you hear a sound You're not sure at first what it is that you are hearing, so you listen again. And then you hear it. It is the sound of a lone wolf howling nearby. And you look towards the edge of the forest and you can see the lone wolf just standing there looking at you. A magnificent, beautiful white wolf. And you are not afraid of him. In fact, you are delighted. 
to see him. He looks deep into your eyes and it is then that you realize that you know what he is thinking. You can hear his thoughts. Can you hear them? You walk towards the wolf as he turns into the forest and you know you have to follow him because he is asking you to. You know that this beautiful wolf is going to take you somewhere special. As you follow the wolf on the path he leads you on, he tells you that he is your animal spirit guide and he is here to be by your side. He tells you he is your guardian and he will always protect you. He asks you to trust him and you do. And you know that this wolf will never ever harm you. You know that this beautiful animal only wants what is best for you and will help you with anything you need. So you walk through the glorious forest with your guardian wolf and you feel so safe, so happy and so full of life. As you walk, you look at your wonderful guardian and as you walk, you realize how big he is, how strong and how brave he is. And you see his paws and they are enormous. You look at his beautiful fur and realize that you can see every hair on his body. The thick white coat he has is so shiny and clean. He really is an amazing animal. The wolf turns to you and tells you you are going to cross a river now. And you see in front of you an old bridge. The wolf tells you that you can only ever see this bridge when you are with him. Because when he is not there, the bridge cannot be seen. You step onto the bridge with your wolf. And in seconds, you have crossed this vast river. And you are now on another island. A truly special island. This island is the wolf's home. And because he loves you, he has brought you here to meet his family. You walk a little longer. And as you do, your beautiful, brave guardian tells you why he is here for you. He is here because you need him. He is here to tell you to trust in yourself and to tell you to trust in your heart's messages because all messages from the heart come from love. He asks you to trust in him because he will never let you down. He is here to tell you that it is you who have control over your life and it is you who decides what the right thing to do is. He tells you that you too 
have the spirit of the wolf inside you. And you too are very brave and very powerful. And above all else, he asks you to believe in yourself as you are a very beautiful and powerful being filled with light and love for all life. You can hear now, getting closer to you, the sounds of other wolves, and you are not afraid. You are excited because now you are going to meet the wolf's family. You can hear the wolves greeting each other and you can understand what they are saying. But most of all, you can feel the love that they have for each other and for all mankind. It is so special. The other wolves come to you to be greeted and your heart swells with happiness and joy. Your guardian wolf asks you to sit for a while and talk with the wolves and you do. So sit for a while with your beautiful guardian wolf and his wonderful family. Talk to them. Listen to what they have to tell you. Now, it's time for you to return to your home. You stand up and you thank the wolves for their company 
and you thank them for letting you sit with them for a little while. One of the female wolves steps forward and she tells you that you are welcome here any time you want to come back. All you have to do is call out to your guardian wolf and he will come for you. He will hear you because he will always be by your side, helping you, guiding you. Although you may not always see him, he will always be there. You will always be able to feel him standing beside you, protecting you, guiding you and loving you. Now imagine yourself on a beautiful winding path, deep in the heart of a wonderful enchanted forest. And the ground beneath your feet is soft and squishy, but very firm. And it's made from all of the fallen leaves from the trees. Can you feel the squishy leaves under your feet? You can feel a gentle breeze on your face as you walk along the path. And you can feel the warmth of the sun all over your body. Oh, it feels so peaceful here. You look up to the very tops of the trees and you can see glints of sunlight shimmering upon the leaves and it looks so pretty, so sparkly and the air smells so fresh and clean and you take great big deep breaths of it really filling your lungs full of air and with every step you take you feel yourself relaxing more and more as you go deeper and deeper into the forest. As you walk, you notice the birds flying and hopping from place to place, happily singing their songs to each other. The more you walk, the more you notice all the other wildlife at work and at play here in this magical place. Off in the distance, you can hear the sound of tumbling water and you wonder where it's coming from. Maybe it's a waterfall. So you follow the sounds of the water, not sure what you'll find. And lo and behold, you discover a beautiful clear stream that's gurgling and splashing over small rocks and pebbles. And it looks so cool and inviting so inviting that you think you want to go for a paddle in it. So you sit down and are just about to take off your shoes when you notice some very nice squirrels and rabbits darting about, playing just over the other side of the stream. They hear you and they stop to have a look. The rabbits, being very timid, run off and disappear into the nearby bushes. But the squirrels, well, they are very curious and they all gather together. One of the squirrels, who has a lovely red coat and big bushy tail, comes close to the edge of the stream and looks at you with big soft brown eyes, kind eyes. The others creep a bit closer too, a bit timid, but they still come. They start to chatter to each other, but you can't hear what they are saying over the sound of the water gurgling over the rocks. The first squirrel, who is the bravest one, says to you, Hello, who are you and why are you here? You tell him that you were out walking and just happened to come across the stream, and well, here you are really. The squirrel then asks you if you would like a cup of tea after your long walk. It's the least they can do, he tells you. So you take off your shoes, 
and cross the stream to meet the squirrels. When you get to the other side, the bravest squirrel, who tells you his name is Red, because he has a lovely soft red shiny coat, looks at you again and says, Hmm, I don't think you'll fit in our village. You're way too big. The squirrels gather together again and chatter to each other. Then Red steps forward and pulls a shiny brown nut out of his pocket. And he says, Here, eat this, and then you can fit into our village. Red gives you the shiny brown nut, and you look at it thinking, Well, it looks like a nut. You give it a little lick and think, Hmm, it tastes like a nut. Okay, so you pop it into your mouth and begin to chew. Then, the most amazing thing happens. As you chew, you begin to shrink in size. And by the time you stop chewing, you are the same size as the squirrels. Oh my! You are astounded as you come face to face with all of the squirrels. You look around you and you realise that the world looks very different when you're the size of a squirrel. The trees now look like giant skyscrapers and the stream looks like a mighty river. And the sky, well the sky looks like it's a million miles away. Oh my goodness me. Red introduces you to his squirrel friends. There is Bushy, because he has the bushiest tail of all the squirrels. There is Cyril, who has a bit of a wonky tail because he fell out of a tree when he was little and broke it, and it never really mended right. Then there is Penelope. She thinks she's ever so posh and tends to talk with a very posh English accent. Then there is Elvis. Now Elvis thinks he is a great singer. He isn't. He has a terrible singing voice, but it doesn't stop him from singing with great gusto and as loud as he possibly can, much to the annoyance of the other squirrels. Red and his friends take you over to their tree, a very large tree with little lights draped all over it. Red tells you that every tree is a different squirrel village and each one is very special and very magical too. They go around the back of the tree and you see a doorway. They open the door and as they do you realize that in fact it's an elevator and you all pile inside and it begins to move. There are many floors in this tree and Red tells you that this is their village and many, many squirrels live inside this beautiful tree. The first floor is full of shops, shops that they use. And Red tells you that their favorite shop is the fruit and nut shop. He says it has a lot of different fruits and all different varieties of nuts. The second floor has a gym and a swimming pool. They all love this floor. The third floor is the school for the young squirrels. And Red tells you that they still go to school, but they don't like it very much because all they really want to do is be outside playing and exploring. The fourth floor is the most amazing garden of herbs, spices, and lots and lots of flowers. And you think it's a bit odd that they have a garden inside the tree, but the squirrels think it's normal because this is their home and they love it. The fifth floor is where all the tiny squirrel houses are, and there are many, many of them, all different shapes and sizes. The sixth floor is full of cafes and looks out over the forest from the many windows all around it. This is where they are taking you for a nice cup of tea 
or lemonade if you prefer that instead. They also have big cream cakes and juicy fruit to snack on too, not forgetting the endless supply of nuts that the squirrels love so very much. On the final floor live the mayor and the mayoress of the village. They are the ones who are in charge of everything and they have the biggest house of all. In fact, they have the whole of the top floor to themselves. Kind of like a penthouse suite. And they are very lucky to live there. Elvis begins to sing. And he sings so loudly that it's hurting your ears. Red tells him to stop so that you can all talk together. But he carries on humming anyway. It's like he just can't stop. You don't mind, really. In fact, you really rather like it. So for a few moments, sit in the cafe with your new friends and enjoy yourself. Get to know them. Have some fun. And when you finish here, go and explore their village with them. Find out what it's really like to live in a tree. And remember... You too are the size of a squirrel and you can fit anywhere inside this tree. So go, enjoy yourself with the squirrels. Now it's time for you to return to your own home. You can always return to visit your new squirrel friends anytime you wish. Next time, maybe you can play some games with them. Or maybe you can bring them a gift. They would like that. So for now, you say goodbye to Red to Penelope, to Cyril, to Bushy, 
and to Elvis, the singing squirrel. You leave the tree, and as you do, you begin to grow larger and larger. And Cyril shouts, Don't worry, next time you visit, we'll make you small again. You laugh out loud and can't wait for your next visit. Your next adventure with these amazing squirrels who have now become your friends. And now you are back in your very own bed, feeling so peaceful, so calm, feeling so sleepy now. And you are drifting deeper and deeper into the most wonderful night's sleep. So snuggle down and you feel so safe and protected. And when you wake up in the morning, you will feel completely refreshed, bright and alert and ready to begin the new day ahead. And each night from now on, you will sleep better and better, deeper and deeper. Night-night. <laughs>